Hello, this is the Resilient Energy Center. I am Tegin Kize, and I'm joined with my colleagues Joni Petty and Celine Mornin. We are very passionate about fighting fatigue and making sure that you experience resilience. So in this series, we're going to be sitting down and looking at a few things that can help you be more resilient, but also really looking at how sleep can influence and impact how best you're able to be resilient. So ladies, tell me a bit more about the Resilient Energy Center and why it's so important. So in terms of the overall FAB quotient, which is really what we focus on at the Resilient Energy Center, is there three dimensions. And the importance of uh, really activating sleep to have no brain fog and <laughs> maximize your productivity in the day is around how you fuel yourself. We'll speak to Celine about her, as a registered dietitian, her expertise, how we activate our bodies and our brain, which is what I'm fascinated about. And in Siki, you speak so beautifully around the behave dimension of the FAB quotient. So really from the helicopter perspective, we've got our IQ, our EQ, and to live a life where you're energized, balanced, and well, yeah. you need to look at your FAB quotient. And for now, we're talking about the pandemic of a lack of sleep, both in quantity and quality. And we see today that sadly, because of the fact that we're so stressed and so busy, that it's almost like we get a badge of honor if we're not sleeping and we're able to do more with our time awake. But it really is having a huge impact in terms of our physical, emotional, and mental well-being. And um, Joni can share some of the stats because she's had the wonderful opportunity of really deep diving into this topic, working in Washington in the US with Ariana Huffington herself, who's the author of The Sleep Revolution. But when we don't get enough sleep and we are sleep deprived, it really impacts our performance on all levels. Jody, you were speaking about a certain group of people the, um, in Tokyo, I think, who don't get enough sleep. Yes. So it's fascinating now because in CK, as we know, with digitals and wearable devices, we can track how much people are sleeping in terms of quantity and quality, actually. And Tokyo is the world leader in terms of lack of sleep. So we should sleep between seven and nine hours a night, on average eight. But in Tokyo, they are sleeping like four hours 45. Yeah. So it's really, it's terribly de detrimental in terms of their productivity. And they now have a Japanese word for that. And it's in imuri, which means I'm awake while asleep. So I'm sitting in a meeting, seemingly awake and engaging <laughs> with colleagues, but nothing's yeah. happening upstairs from a brain uh, perspective. So that's quite interesting for me, right? So in helping people to move past that and sort of get into a space where they are more resilient, there is the FAB quotient. So if we unpack FAB, fuel, activate, and behave, what does fuel speak to Celine? Well, when we link fuel and food to sleep deprivation, what we know is that when you don't get enough sleep, there's a couple of chemical reactions that happen in your body and they're not really good. So one of them is you increase your levels of a hormone called ghrelin, so ghrelin may make you think about gremlins. gremlins. Yeah. <laughs> and gremlins were hangry. They were irritable, angry, and hungry. And that's exactly what elevated levels of ghrelin does. It makes you feel hungry, and specifically for sugary fast release foods. So you could be exercising, you could be really eating well or trying to, but if you're sleep deprived, perhaps you're only sleeping five or six hours a night and that's not enough for you, over a period of time, just a couple of weeks, you will start to have cravings for sweet foods. So there you go, in the afternoons, you're gonna want chocolate. Yeah. The other thing that happens is your stress hormone cortisol tends to increase naturally when you don't have enough sleep and that puts you into a more of a stress response. So we call that the fight, flight, or freeze response. So it aggravates stress. And most of us already have too much stress in our lives. So those are two things that can happen. It impacts your weight, because you potentially eat more, and you crave more sugary things. And when you put on weight and you're highly stressed and sleep deprived, you could find that you put the weight around your waist. Yeah. And we know that, that when you carry too much weight around your waist, it's close to your organs, like your heart, your pancreas, your liver, your kidneys, and it interacts quite badly with your bloodstream, it can increase your cholesterol, and there's a huge bunch of metabolic things that can start to go wrong. So all that waistline fat might not necessarily just be fat, but I could be stressed out and just really carrying it in the wrong places. Exactly. So if we speak about activate, Joni, how do we move from adding fuel to our lives and being able to activate correctly? Activate, we often think of energize, but sometimes we need to deactivate as well. So there's quite a few dimensions to that. If I build on what Celine said about cortisol, when we sleep, we actually get rid of some of that cortisol in our brain. And cortisol is hugely detrimental. So if we've got too much of it all day and we're awake for too long, 
in the day. I mean, some people we know are only sleeping four hours a night, and it's hugely detrimental to activating the brain. So cortisol actually erodes the synapses between the neurons. Mm. So those connections that help us think clearer, be more innovative, problem solve, make the right choices and decisions, we're not able to do that in that state of brain fog because we haven't got rid of the cortisol. So our brain at night, we've got to deactivate and actually make sure that all that inflammation starts to simmer down in our brains. But mm. activate is a flip side. The activate is if you exercise and you get back into your body, you actually definitely tend to sleep better. So it's around saying how do we use the neuroscience and understanding of the brain to make sure that those eight hours on average that we're gonna sleep are really beneficial for us and we get the deep sleep. So I was just listening to Celine speaking about ghrelin and I'm finding it fascinating that this craving for sugar is now ha waking people up. Mm. So they're having mm. too little sleep and they wake up at midnight and craving chockies or you know, a slice of bread with syrup on it. So it's really important to deactivate mm. and then to activate during the day so that you can also get rid of this inflammation in the brain. Yeah, and that's, that's very important because that builds on into how you behave, you know, and creating tiny mm. habits around your lifestyle, whether it's the morning, the midday, the afternoon, and making sure you're including those things that can help you behave better towards the kinds of goals that you want to achieve. And I think a big part of behave is making sure that you're focusing on one tiny habit. I think if I l listen to fuel and I listen to activate, there's so many things I can immediately want to wake up tomorrow and start doing and a key thing when we're looking at how you behave is to make sure that you pick one tiny habit that you can then include in your regiment or whatever it looks like and having a trigger that reminds you to start doing and start putting in place that positive habit so you can start behaving differently and doing better improving your level of resilience in general so I really look forward to unpacking this conversation and really just chatting to people more about how do they boost their resilience to get your own fab quotient, you can go to our website at www.resilientenergycenter, that's T-E-R at the end, dot com. Oh, I